Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Welcome learners. My name is Stephen Kariungi and today we continue with our topic of discussion and this is uh, genetics. <coughs> uh, this is a topic uh, that is offered at Form 4 level and uh, we are going to discuss some of the terminologies that are used uh, in the study of genetics. Uh, previously, uh, we explained what is a dominant gene and what is a recessive gene, whereby we say that uh, a dominant gene is the gene that masks or that covers another gene, preventing the weaker gene from expressing itself. On the other hand, uh, a recessive gene is a suppressed gene, a gene that does not get an opportunity to express itself in the presence of the dominant gene. Now, <coughs> uh, we have other terminologies, so we are saying these are other terminologies in genetics. We have the term, oh, sorry for that, uh, we have the term phenotype and this is the outward appearance. of an organism, the outward appearance of an organism. E.g., for example, uh, in the Mendel's experiment, uh, we can use the word, or we can use the appearance of tallness, e.g. tall. Uh, that is an outward appearance, so that is the phenotype. Or we can say short which we say that we can also stroke it with the dwarf, for instance. So tallness and shortness is an outward appearance, something that you can be able to see. And we refer to that as the phenotype. We also have something that is known as the genotype. And now this is the genetic constitution. of an organism, the genetic constitution of an organism is referred to as the genotype. So for example, <coughs> we can say that uh, let us use the letters T, T to represent tallness, so that is the genotype, or we can use the small letter small t small t to represent the shortness because basically we are looking at uh, the tallness where there is the presence of tallness we use the capital uh, letters where there is the absence of tallness that's shortness we use the small letters then uh, <coughs> uh, another term that we need to explain is uh, homozygous state and this is where this is where the genotype of an organism, we have learned the genotype up here, is represented by identical letters showing similar genes. So for example, e.g. TT and 
small t small t <coughs> excuse me are homozygous states because they have identical letters capital capital or small small so the two letters are identical the two letters are identical that means the two genes are similar the two genes are similar capital t uh, capital t <clears throat> then we have another state that we refer to as the heterozygous state and this is where <clears throat> the genotype remember the genotype is represented using letters the genetic constitution is represented using letters is where the genotype is represented using is represented using different genes or different letters eg capital t and small t to represent tallness so whereby the two uh, genes are different uh, we refer to that as being heterozygous where the two are similar we refer to that as being homozygous then we have what we call alleles alleles are alternative forms of a gene they are alternative forms of a gene alternative forms of a gene that determine a particular trait alternative forms of a gene that uh, determine a particular trait eg allele T represents tallness and allele small t represents shortness <coughs> so alleles are alternative forms of a gene that determine a particular trait so t for tallness small t for shortness then we have what we call the complete dominance this is a situation where a gene expresses itself in a heterozygous state so for example where we are talking about the heterozygous state the gene for capital T will express itself at the expense of the gene for small t so we call that complete dominance where a gene expresses itself in the heterozygous state at the expense at the expense of the recessive gene at the expense of the recessive gene or the weaker gene <coughs> now <coughs> So having uh, 
uh, studied those uh, terminologies, the phenotype, genotype, homozygous state, and uh, heterozygous state. We'll have an example applying those. We are told that uh, a farmer <clears throat> so a farmer planted seeds obtained from tall plants only, but after three months he harvested a mixture of tall and short plants. So you are told, use a genetic diagram to explain this. A genetic diagram. So we'll start with the parental phenotype. The phenotype of the plants or the outward appearance was tall. This was tall against tall. And therefore, the parental genotype. Uh, these tall were not pure breeds because if they were pure breeds, we could not have obtained the short plants. That shows that they were impure tall. They were not pure. And therefore, the genotype will have a capital T and a small t and capital T, small t to show that they were not pure. That's what they were giving us, short. The gametes that were there, in the tall, we had that gamete and that gamete. On the other one, we had the same. We always make sure that we circle the gametes and then we do fusion or we do fertilization whereby the first gamete takes the first one on the other side then the first one <coughs> takes the second of the other one, then we have a capital small, and then finally we have small, small. So, <coughs> so we refer to these offspring as the first generation, which we call F1 generation. And because we are using letters, we call it the genotype. F1 generation genotype. F1 generation genotype was as that. Then, F1 generation phenotype, the phenotype, uh, we had one, two, three, tall, so the phenotype of this was three, tall, and one, short, or one, dwarf. So we have seen this as the F1 generation, the first generation from the parents. If we take these ones and we use them as parents in the next generation, then we get to the second generation. Then we have also uh, seen the genotype, we use the letters, the phenotype, we use the appearance.
So the assignment, the first question, what is complete dominance? Two, a farmer planted a mixture of pure tall and dwarf plants. Predict the outcome using a genetic diagram. We'll stop there until next time. Goodbye.